Okay, today, uh, professor. Yeah. Uh, how many more grades do we have for the year? Do we are we cutting anything out or not? Nope. Nope. We stayed right on pace. All right. Cool. We're, we're going to be covering everything. Uh, I don't know about all of your other classes, but this is one class where um, we're still fortunate. You folks have done a great job online and we've kept pace with what's going on. And um, yeah, we're gonna be able to cover everything. So if you're rolling into 161, then you will, um, we won't have to back up and you know go relook at something. We're gonna hit it all. All right, so today we're gonna talk about two more sections and we're gonna build on our class and actually add to our demo so we can test it. But we're going to keep moving along with methods. And today we're going to start with section 6.4, and it's on constructors. Um, what is a constructor? Well, it's part of your class. Uh, let's see. In my class right now, uh, we're doing a class with circle. Is that correct? Anybody? Yeah. Yep. We're doing circle. And um, inside a circle, we had radius. And then we had a whole bunch of methods to go along with that class. We had the set radius and the get radius. We called the set radius method a mutator. And we called the get an accessor method. And then from that, we had all kinds of good stuff. We had calc area, calc circumference. So we, we had this chart, again, it's called a UML chart, where we sort of just wrote all these notes down of what we'd like to have inside of our circle class. Now, once this circle class is written, any program that I'm working with and I need something out of it, I can just go grab it. Just like any program you're working on and you need something from the math class, you can just go grab it. Okay, so we had we had the sets and the gets and we had the calcs and so on. And we know we all based this on the only one thing that we needed to know, and that was radius. Once I know the radius, everything is, is going to come off of that. Just like your rectangle program, you, all you need to know is length and width. What if in my rectangle program, I would have had another variable called area and length was four and width was five, and then I calculate the area, and what would the area be? Now, it's four times five, it would be 20, okay? But now, what happens if I change my variable for length and made it 20? And what if I forgot to recalculate area? Area is still 20. Well, what happens is I now have a length of 20, a width of five, and my area is sitting on 20 because I forgot to recalculate it. Well, that's what we call stale data. So that's why we minimize the number of variables we use. In this case, we're just using radius. In your other programs, you were just using length and width and so on. So we don't, we don't want to make extra variables that we don't need. Well, this section 8, or excuse me, 6.4 is called constructors. And what a constructor does is, I'm going to start first by saying, int x. In a program, if you have int x, what does int x do? Just got somebody, help me out. Anybody, Bueller? Uh, I guess I'll just keep talking. X is a variable, right? I know I just created a variable X and I gave it a value of zero. What if I did something like int X equals six? What does that do? Well, that creates a variable X and it gives it the value of six. So far, so good. And, and you should be saying, yeah, we all remember this is, this is kind of what we've done. Well, yes. What happens if I did something along the lines of circle, circ equals new circle? Well, what I just wrote kind of parallels 
what was going on up here in X. I created a variable X and it was by default assigned a value zero. Here, I instantiated an object called circ in this circle, circ equals new circle. And what value does radius get? Never really thought of that, not until we got into the program and we use set radius to give it a value. Well, it actually does get a value to start. And what do you think it is? Zero. Zero, right. It's going to, so radius by default is going to get a value zero. Well, just like I did in X and I changed it to in X equals zero, I can now do something along the lines of circle, circ equals new, circle, and maybe send in, in my parentheses, the number four. So what do I need to do? I need to write what's called a constructor. So back in my UML chart, where I have the list of everything that's in my class, I have my circle, I have my radius. I'm now going to include um, circle, the name circle, which is the exact same name as the class. And I'm going to be bringing in a double and I'm just going to call it um, R so that a value can be passed in. Now, this value R is going to be the 4 from when I instantiated the object and put the 4 inside of parentheses. That's going to fly through the air, and it's going to hit this constructor. Now, you've actually looked at this already, and you typed in code listing... Can everyone see my screen? You typed yeah. in code listing constructor demo. And in constructor demo, you have a line that said rectangle box equals new rectangle 5.0 and 15.0. So again, I'm instantiating an object called box. Uh, and now I have 5.0 and 15.0 in my parentheses. So when I go back to my rectangle class, starting on line 17, you see public rectangle, double len, double w, and then length, which is one of my fields in my class, gets the value of len, and width, which is a field in my class, is going to get the value of w. So what I've done here is I've instantiated an object, but I called the constructor, which basically is like the int x equals 6. I'm assigning values right away, but in this case, I'm assigning them to length and width. Now, inside of this program, I can have several constructors. For example, I have one I'm going to include here, public rectangle and empty parentheses. And now a left brace, I'm going to say length. Instead of having a starting value of zero, I'm going to say length equals 10 and width equals 10. So now I have more than one constructor. So if I instantiate an object, if I say um, rectangle, <clears throat> excuse me, R, so if I go back to my demo, excuse me, and I say rectangle box equals new rectangle five and 15, it knows to call that second constructor. If I did rectangle box one equals new rectangle, and I did empty parentheses, it would know to call the other constructor. The other constructor, again, is my default constructor. That's the one that just has the heading, public rectangle and empty parentheses. So now, instead of letting the system give values to, of length and width when I create the object, I'm going to give length and width their own values. Okay, so now I have two constructors. How does it know which one to use? Well, the one is empty parentheses, and the one has length and width. Now, these things, these um, parentheses things, like for an example, the first one, I have nothing in the parentheses. In the second one, I have double N and double W. These are, as you know, parameter lists but we also call them the signature. So when I instantiate an object of class rectangle, it's going to look in the parentheses and then say, hey, I know which one to use. 
fact, I could even add a third one if I wanted to. Public rectangle, double, and I'm just going to call it num. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to say, well, whatever that number is, I'm going to let my length equal that num. And I'm going to say width equals uh, equals num. And then end it with a brace. So now I have what's called three constructors. One has no parameters. One has one parameter called num. And one has two parameters. Okay, so I have multiple constructors. Again, when I go to my demo, I have rectangle box equals new rectangle 515. That's calling that third constructor. I have another object, rectangle box one equals new rectangle. I'm going to add a third constructor, rectangle. Uh oh, somebody doesn't know how to spell rectangle. Rectable is not the same as rectangle. Rectangle box. 2 equals new rectangle, and I want to put one parameter in here, 7.5. So I have three different objects I'm working with, three different constructor calls. It's all going to depend on what the signature is, depends on what the parameter list is. Questions? Okay. Give me one second. I think I saw some stuff pop up under comments, but I have to maximize. I have to maximize my screen. Well, I want. Oh, it's because I'm in share. If you had a comment, let me know what it was. Did anybody see comments? Okay. Anyhow, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, Okay, yeah, they were, they were, I, I got the comments. Thanks. All right, so that is constructors. Now, the next thing I want to cover today is actually a jump out of chapter six, and I want to go to what's called section 8.4. But before I do that, I'm going to go back and share my screen again, and I'm back in the program. And so all of a sudden, I say, display. Uh, so in my demo program, I have system.out.print, the box's length is, and then we say box.getLength, the box.getWidth for the width. We even have a box.getArea. Now, what if I would have said, I'm just curious, when I have X, I can just do system.println, and X comes out. But I'm curious what I would get if I would try to do a println of box, what would box look like? Well, barring any typos, hopefully I don't have any. We'll find it out in a second. Let's see what prints out for box. My compiler's not compiling fast, but if I wanted to straight up print out a box object, and my compiler is up. Oh, I do have an error, and that's uh, that's the one that I was told about. My bad. I'm going to come back and compile it again. Hopefully, I won't have any more problems. I do have a problem. I don't know how to spell width. Y T H is not how you spell width, is it? All right, back to the demo. One more try. Any questions so far on constructors? Well, now it looks like I have another error. Rectangle box equals new rectangle. Does anybody see what my error is? I think it's the rectangle uh, equals rectangle thing. In the class or the demo? Um, in the demo. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'm in the demo right now. I say rectangle box equals new rectangle 515. Uh, 
I'm blanking on the equation for the area right now, but I know it just uses those two numbers. Yeah, it would just use length times width. Yeah. Okay. So there it ran. Um, my next line that I just deleted out must have been it. So right now we're using that default con uh, the constructor that sends 5 and 15 in. So when I run it, it says the box length is 5. Good. The box width is 15. Good. The box's area is 75. Good. And then when I printed out the actual box, it says rectangle ampersand 443B7951. It doesn't give me anything good, does it? Say no. 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 Okay. But what I can do is I can set up my class so that I'm able to print out objects. So I'm going to go back to my rectangle class. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to add something new. What I'm going to add is going to come from section 8.4. In section 8.4, we talk about an, an ending method that I want you to put in your class. It's called toString. So I'm looking on page 508, and I see a class. Now, this section used to be back in the chapter we're currently in. In this edition, the author moves it to chapter eight. I'd like the author to keep it back in chapter six. So anyhow, we have to jump. Now we have a special method, public string, that's my return type, and the name of it is two string. Now the name's not really important after this because when I go back and run my demo and say, hey, let's print out the object, it's gonna print it out for me. All right, so now I'm going to come in and I have a method. And what I'm going to do is type str string, str equals. And now I'm going to put what I'd love to see outputted when I go and try to print the object name. In this case, it's box. So maybe I want to put something inside of it that looks like the area is uh, and double quotes plus now what's my area well i just call the method that's sitting right up above get area so now when i get ready to print out my string i probably want to you know add some more than just that but if i go back to my demo and i go and compile it with a little luck when i go to print out um, system, I know what I forgot, excuse me. I forgot one thing. What's the uh, return type in this? String, right? So I'm going back to my two string method and I always have to have a return and I wanna return str. So when I go to print out an object and it says, oh, print out an object, it's gonna come back and see if there's this method, uh, the name's reserved, called two string. If it is, it's gonna take whatever I return from that two string and display it. So now let's come back to the demo again, see if I didn't mess it up. And what do I have? Is it still messed up? It is still messed up. My demo is failing. If I go back to constructor, my constructor, I say str equals get area and not sure why it's not printing the area. Somebody see, am I missing something? I'm looking on page 508, same kind of deal, but for some reason it's not printing out the constructor. Let me save these and let me um, compile it real quick. Let me try one more time. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the compiling error? Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, it's the extra quotes. I see it. Thank you. Now let's try my demo. Drum roll. Anybody? Drum roll. There we go. Good. And ta-da. Now it finally says in that last system dot out dot printland SSS. It's going to call it when I go to print box, it jumps into my class. It says, oh, there's a two string print out whatever's being returned, that string that says the area is 75.
All right, good, successful, happy. Now I'm going to um, render that video and I'll upload it. While I'm doing that, what I'd like you to do is go back to your circle programs. Okay, uh, does everybody have a copy of circle program? Yes. Okay, so for your circle program, I'd like you to go in and put in two constructors. One constructor is going to be circle and then in parentheses double R. The other constructor is just going to be circle with empty parentheses, meaning you're going to just give radius a value. So this is my default constructor. This is a second constructor with double R. Okay, the example we looked at, we just had three constructors. Then I want you to go in and add a two string method at the end of your circle class. That way, if the user in the demo wants to print out circ1 or circ, it'll call that two string where you're going to have a whole bunch of information like here's the radius, here is the area, here is the circumference. A little bit more than what I just put in my circle example. Okay? So you're going to go back to your circle. We're going to keep building on it. You're going to add two constructors and a two string. Questions? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make groups of two or three. And if you want to work by yourself, just don't join the group. And then what I'll do is I'll navigate the groups to put and make sure there's at least two people in groups that want to work in groups. How's that sound? Okay. I'm going to make um, five breakout rooms and we'll go from there. Actually, I'm going to make four breakout rooms. Hey, you're going to upload this on YouTube, right? Because yep, I'm going to do it. Like first I'm 10 gonna... minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do it right now while you okay. folks are starting. Okay? Thanks a lot. All right, rooms are opening.